Right. <coughs> okay. So, so this 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 uh, presentation is not about the uh, the electronics itself or the or code. It's more about um, the physical mounting of um, of uh, a Pi and and uh, um, associated I/O boards. So, uh, for people who don't know me, <coughs> I I, um, I install uh, Raspberry Pis in in uh, industrial applications, you know, in machines, um, in monitoring systems, etc. So. I'm always uh, looking to uh, how to physically mount these things in a in a fairly robust way, and and normally they go in a in a steel cabinet, um, in um, something that's it's extremely robust. Um, you need that in a factory environment. Um, so the one of the things you we're always interested in is uh, ongoing maintenance and diagnostics. So um, size is not you know miniaturization is not a driving force for me. It's it's um, it's it's about uh, access and the ability to go back in and, and diagnose a fault. Uh, so I've uh, previously been um, building cards on a on the sort of based on the same format as a Pi um, or slightly longer, um, so we could stack them. But um, the, the the because of the, the reduced footprint. Um, the, the cards tended to be fairly tall. So in what I've done recently is gone to this arrangement of, of having a, um, a card that's um, based on what, um, it's, it's reasonably large, it's about 140 millimetres long and about 90 millimetres high. <clears throat> and while um, thinking about this sort of format and, and the ability to put it in a, in a, in a rack, um, I remembered back to what was known as the S100 bus so uh, dragged out one of the card frames, um, still have and copied the copied the size. <clears throat> so this this happens to be a three D printed three uh, D printed rack. So you can see how the, the cards slide in or slide out. Um, now typically S one hundred bus had a a plug in edge connector at the back. Um, I'm, I'm not doing that, but so what, what we've got here is a is an eight output uh, MOSFET output um, driver card and and eight inputs. So there's LEDs at the top and the bottom, <clears throat> but you can see that to to allow for the the card to slide in the rack, I had to um, keep away from, or keep the components away from the the edge of the board. And at the back, I've just put in a, a 40 pin uh, dip uh, a dual line. Which is uh, the same map mapping as a as a um, the GPIO port, and I would daisy chain that up with a with a ribbon cable, um, and then on the side of the of this case, you can see some holes where you can actually um, you can screw on a pie. So you would just daisy chain the um, uh, around the back. The ribbon cable come out through one of the holes here and just plug straight onto a onto a pie. And this particular rack, you can screw it down to, onto a onto a horizontal surface, or in a cabinet, you can screw it to the to the to a vertical panel, and uh, just project the the, the 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 rack off the off that arrangement. So this this provided a, a fairly flexible way of um, just mounting up uh, circuit cards. So the other the other arrangement I I, I've, I use is uh, mounting them on a on a uh, on an acrylic plate, and I've 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 done this quite a lot, um, and in fact probably most of the 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 pies I've installed in the last couple of years have been on this sort of arrangement. But to get to get but to get back into some of these, you know, you've got to dis do a fair bit of dismantling. However, I must say I would rarely have to um, dismantle uh, uh, one of these systems. Um, the, the, the systems I find are just highly reliable. Um, the way the way I went about with the, the concept with these uh, I/O boards is the um, the 24 volt power supply that runs this whole system will current limit at about say three or five amps, and you can those MOSFETs are rated way in excess of that, so you can put a dead short on the on the output. And all that happens is the uh, is the power supply current limits, pulls the voltage down to zero, 
and uh, there's no need for fuses or or um, any protection. It's just just using the uh, current the current limit on the power supply. But you can see here what I've done here is <coughs> um, taken a piece of six mil acrylic and and drilled and tapped holes into it, and then put in um, the sort of the, the standoffs. Uh, let's just screw them straight into the base, and then um, start by I'll come back to that, and just start by screwing um, boards in, and you um, in that case the the top one is two layers. I've just used another standoff, put the next board on top with a with a um, you can see on the on the pie it's held in with uh, down the bottom here. These are just white um, uh, nylon screws. So there's no there's no conductive there's no metal in this whole area. And you can see on this card here where where the um, it's slid in the card frame. Um, I'm using that same space to um, use uh, mounting holes. Um, I generally use uh, M3 screws, um, but of course the Pi has got a um, uh, a 2.5 or 2.6 millimeter clearance hole for M2.5, so. I just use a drill and just ease it out a bit to ease it out from 2.6 to 3 um, and and it fits you know it works nicely I, I don't use an electric drill I, uh, I just do it by hand and then you can see the ribbon cable I just I just use a, a vise and just squeeze the connectors onto a, a piece of ribbon cable and just fold it in an L-shaped so it goes underneath the card see here it's plugged on on one of the cards here and then plugged onto the GPIO of the of the Pi and uh, just daisy chain it up like that and that, that's quite an effective um, um, arrangement for, uh, for for physical mounting it's quite robust um, and I, I don't have any vibration issues Th these these machines are actually moving and vibrating <coughs> these, these things don't fall apart they don't break um, they're, they're quite uh, are quite robust like that. Just another view of how we stack them up. And then uh, on the above the pie, I've put another another card here. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll, I'm going actually going to redevelop this card. Um, you can see what I do is I I just put in down the bottom left um, 24 volt because most most industrial systems will work on 24 volt DC. So I I. I put in 24 volts. I've got a 24 to 5 um, uh, regulator, and I just put the 5 volts straight down the ribbon cable and power the Pi um, through the through the ribbon, and that works quite successfully. And then th this card here, the, the I/O cards have got their separate. Again, we put 24 volts into the in through the um, 25 pin D connector. You can also see I use a lot of uh, Phoenix um, two and three pin connectors. Um, they they lock in and they don't they don't fall out. They're they're, a, <clears throat> they're a quite a good good connector. But what I'll do is <clears throat> I think I'll do is redevelop this board. And uh, I, this time I might actually get where I got to place the hole the mounting holes in the right location. I can see I I miscalculated and <laughs> had to sort of <clears throat> make myself a little template and a drilling template and uh, drill them in the right in the correct location. But I'll just take that board and stack it on top of here and change the ribbon cable a bit. And uh, that way I expose the pie so it's easier to get in and, and plug in a, 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 an ethernet cable. Um, and, and just as a tip, I, in industrial environments, I tend not to use Wi-Fi. I, I, <clears throat> I find that you, um, if you're looking for something that's critical, particularly something that might be this Pi would be hooked up to a um, an SQL database and writing records, um, there are times when you won't you won't get communication. Um, you know, it's reasonable, but um, but it's not reliable enough. So I, I tend to go for um, a, a hard wired Ethernet connection. So you can see I can get to the SD card underneath here the way I've arranged it. It's um, so I can I can get in there with a pair of tweezers or you know put my fingers in there. It's a bit more difficult when it's mounted in a you know recessed in a cabinet, but um, you, you can get back at that pretty easy. 
Um, I thought the third part I would, <coughs> would just show you as a third aspect of this is um, um, what's known as a watchdog timer. Now, there's a lot of software watchdog timers. So a Pi, the, the, in the Broadcom chip, in the, in the ARM chip, there is, a, there is a watchdog timer in there. So it says if, the, um, if a piece of code doesn't reset the timer, it'll, it'll do a reboot. But in the systems I've got where I'm actually running um, fairly large electric motors and in, in one, one extruder I'm running, it's got a, um, a 50 kilowatt uh, motor. If the if if the if the arm chip hangs, which it very rarely does, or more importantly, if, if the Python code stops, the uh, the motor will just keep going. <clears throat> so I need a, a I need a way of actually shutting down the um, the machine uh, if something something goes wrong. And so that's that's the the design principle of this watchdog timer. So it's independent of the. It's independent of the uh, of of both the ARM chip and the and the code, so I just use a, a simple um, on the left hand side a simple uh, DIN mounted timer. Um, <clears throat> these these universal timers and the sort of up the top here this these this knob here allows you to uh, set these things to be like time delay on you know time on delay on you know you turn off the power and it will delay before it turns off the output. So there's all sorts of combinations, but the, the one I use here, this, and this is this what's quite unique to this one, is it's looking for an input and it's looking for the, the change of state of the input. There's a, there's a lot of these timers around, but if you take the input and hold it high, the, the timer will stay reset. <clears throat> Whereas this one is actually looking for edge triggered. So if it doesn't see a, a change of state from the code, um, it will time out and open its contacts. <clears throat> so on the right hand side here, I've got a, uh, an emergency stop, stop safety circuit um, and it, it just interrupts one of the inputs to that thing, which will then cascade and turn all the power off to the, um, to the machine. And, and how these uh, safety circuits work is, um, if you've got a, something like an emergency stop button, um, and let's say it's just got a single normally closed contact and you, when you hit the stop button, uh, the contact opens and this, this relay would drop out. You run the risk that the contact is jammed shut and you hit the button and nothing happens. So what, this, what you do is you actually wire up two contacts in parallel or two separate circuits off the switch. And this thing is looking at the two of them. But more importantly, um, it's looking for both to open, both contacts open and close within about 100 milliseconds of each other. So it actually will test before you can even get the machine to start. You quite have to actually push the emergency stop button to do a self test. And it's checking that both contacts close and open simultaneously. And so it's, it's, it's looking at the reliability of the, of the safety systems. So all I simply do is I've just put that in, in series with the e-stop button and if, if this thing, if the software times out, um, it just hits the e-stop and just pulls everything up. And, and how I do that, so I've got, basically I just, all, all my code is, it's got, I've just got two threads running. One is the machine controller on one side and the second thread is doing nothing else but just outputting a, a, a one hertz output. It, it's, it's really simple bit of code. Um, and so if this timer, as soon as it sees that first rising edge, the, the timer closes its contacts and the safety circuit works. So on power up, the, you can't actually get the machine, the, the motors of the machine going. The uh, Pi will boot, uh, it'll eventually get, um, you know, self start the, the Python program. And then you start getting this output. And as soon as you get that, the contacts close on the timer and you can start the machine. And so I just set the timer to two seconds and if, if I haven't seen a, a one hertz pulse for, you know, for two seconds, it'll just drop out. So if it freezes in the low state, it'll drop out. And if it freezes in the high state, it'll drop out. Um, so it's a, you know, a $40, $40 timer and, and just one output of the, of the um, out of the pie. And it's as, it's as simple as that. Um, 
what I would say is that uh, there is probably a slightly better way of going about it is instead of just saying um, I'm looking for a change of state is actually look at the frequency of the of the output and if it because you, you could imagine possible combinations where or possible failure modes where it's still giving an output but it's it's no longer one hertz it's it's changed frequency it's you know it's five hertz or it's it's you know half a hertz or it's you know it's very slow um, so a better an even better way would be to actually put a frequency detector on there and, and look for change of frequency so anyway that's uh, that's all I had it was a fairly simple uh, presentation um, quite a bit different from the the other two Anybody got any questions? Yeah, some questions there in the chat, Tony. Yeah, I couldn't see that. Um, okay, uh, where are we? So I guess there's a couple of questions around using other pies. So I was, I was, I know you've used some zeros. I don't know if you've ever used the A plus or whether you'd bother. And someone was asking also about the compute modules. Yeah, I, I've. I've stuck with a Pi 3. I normally go with a Pi 3B plus. Um, it's got enough computing power. I mean, I started off in 2012 with a large, I'd put in a large number of the, the first Pi, the Pi 1. Um, they, they work quite well. Um, I did all sorts of applications with that. I, uh, I've sort of standardized on the Pi 3B plus because it's got the four extra pins. I've also got a, um, um, a PoE uh, hat that I made of my own design so I can, you know, I like that so I can just use it in, in any application. Because I, I also uh, use the, uh, the seven inch touch screen a lot and just I just put the, the PoE hat on the top of that. And I can use these cards in combination with the touch screen as well. You know, put the, put the touch screen on the front of, any, of a steel enclosure, you know, uh, cut a hole in the front panel and then mount these cards next to it you just extend the ribbon cable a couple of hundred more millimeter and um, so I leave I leave the pie mounted on the back of the of the touch screen and then just a ribbon cable to these IO cards um, so just for that however I went to buy some the other day and um, they were on 26 week back uh, back order um, there it seems that the the they're, they're manufacturing so many uh, pie fours that the 3b pluses Taking a bit of a, a back seat at the moment. Uh, the Pi zeros I use, I, I do the, I use them in in a Laura base station mainly because of size and of power consumption. Uh, where it's in an outdoor enclosure, I just don't want the heat generated, so I, I, I go for that. But in other areas, I just go for the three B plus. That's just um, just my choice. Um, uh, big motors, uh, so uh, I've not had, I, I, I always practice separating um, mains and control systems. Um, uh, what, I, what I do in, in these applications, and, and this, this one of those cards had it, is I, I don't use analog out to, to control motors, I do a, a pulse train. So I'll get the Pi to generate a frequency train, um, so zero to say 200 kilohertz. And I, I use that to uh, to control the motors, and there's just an opto couple, so everything's optically isolated. Um, I would never extend the 3.3 volts. Um, uh, I, I'm sort of I'm very careful about how far I take 3.3 volts. I would never take it outside of those cards. You know, I always put opto couplers, and everything out, outside of that is optically coupled. Um, and I that's how I. That's how I deal with noise. Um, I don't have noise injection. I, d I did. I actually actually did have a um, uh, a reasonably cheap uh, touch screen, about a 12 inch, 15 inch touch screen, and the noise that that was generating back down through the HMI HDMI um, cable, and injecting it back in the Pi. Uh, as soon as I was using interrupts on the on the GPIO. Um, it just it just injected so much noise that the, the, the pie just thought there was interrupts going on left, right, and center. So I've I've had to go away from that particular brand touchscreen. Um, and so similarly, the compute the compute module. Um, 
I, I like the Pi 3s, etc., because it, it's got I.O., you know, it's got all the interfacing ready to go. It's much easier for, um, and I hate soldering, you know, small connectors. Um, you can see I wear glasses and try to do surface mount, I'm trying to surface mount a, a socket. <laughs> um, uh, what else have we got? A question about the uh, USB on your industrial boards, just be just a five power, five volt power plus, five for other things. So what, 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 so what I've got is, uh, what, what the board does is gives me, um, um, I've got the, I use the 23017 um, two by eight um, port IO, you know, interface chip, you know, I squared C on one side and two eight bit ports on the other side. So I set it up as one set of eight bit input, one set of eight bit output. Um, so I just got opto couplers coming in and then on the output side I drive optos which drive MOSFETs um, and I again I keep the the, tw uh, the voltage and zero volt and um, uh, power supply for the output separate from the input separate from the Pi so I, I could use you know uh, f uh, 5 volt on the input um, you know 24 volt on the output um, it, it, there's no there's no um, galvanic connection between the I and the O or the pie. Um, I mean, that's just a practice I have. Um, I just, I, I just, I go out of my way to prevent earth loops and um, you know any any way that you can get to in noise injected into the into the system. Um, I'm just having a quick look at other. Oh, um, yeah, so the USB, I've, what I had five volts there, I put a USB socket on there just uh, just in case I needed to power other things. Um, you can loop off. So I, te I tend to always have a, 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 an output, or one or two outputs off a, of a power supply board for, for other things. So off my PoE board, I, I supply power to the Pi, but also supply to the to the um, touch screen, and then also to, an, to an ex any accessories. Um, <coughs> That's yeah. Although we have time for you yeah. Okay. Have no, no, no breakfast. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to go to work. <laughs> and I can look out the window and say tomorrow tomorrow is going to be really good. Yeah, look at the window. I have no idea. What's okay. <laughs> sure. I'll give you a, give you a forecast from tomorrow. Great. Thanks very much, Tony. That was really good. Really enjoyed that. Yeah.